All right, uh, Shalom. Before I start, let me give all praises to Yahweh, Bahashim Yahushai, Bahashim Rachach Rosh, the honors to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone, peace, blessings, and salutations to all like Akim, Wa Hakwatim, learning teaching in truth and in sincerity. This is going to be another uh, video through the Spirit. You know, had it uh, cooking in the oven. All right, and it's, uh, you know, basically to use as few words as possible to sum it up. Here soon, the Heavenly Father, instead of using examples or similitudes upon His prophets or by parables, the Heavenly Father is simply just going to send down His wrath. Uh, Alright, yes, a lot. Uh, instead of it being shown uh, upon the prophets, it's going to be directed straight at the two-thirds in whom uh, it is intended for. All right, and what I mean by that, when you read through the scriptures, there's, uh, you know, a whole host of examples of somebody, something uh, happening to one of the prophets for it to be an example to the whole nation. All right, and I'm just going to read, read a few. All right, and here soon in these latter days, that's about to stop. The prophets are going to keep catching hell or keep going through some sort of tragic event just to be an example to the wicked of our people. All right. The Heavenly Father is simply just going to put his hand on the wicked Jake, all right, here soon. So let me get this, uh, let me get this first one. I know brothers already probably got a couple in mind. All right, I'm going to grab the couple that have been popping up in my head. All right, so this is, uh, Isaiah chapter 20. I'm going to start at... Uh, let me see, let me see. Isaiah 20, and I'll start at uh, 2. It says, At that same time, at the same time, spake Yahweh by Shem Yahushai by Isaiah, the son of uh, Amoz, saying, Go and loose the sackcloth from off thy loins, and put off thy shoe from thy foot. So the Heavenly Father had him go barefoot, and what else? All right, and I'll take his. Uh, his clothes off, uh, he said, and he did so, walking naked and barefoot. And Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai said, Likewise, as my servant Isaiah hath walked naked and barefoot three years for a sign and wonder upon Egypt and upon Ethiopia, so the Heavenly Father had Isaiah walk barefoot and naked for three years to be uh, an example to uh, the nation, bro. All right, and you know, this, you know, when winter came, you know, he probably, you know, would have a blanket and whatnot to, so he wouldn't outright freeze to death. But for the most part, hey, he was actually literally, you know, going feet getting cut up, tore up, you know, having his shame out, you know, having people look at him, oh, what the hell is he doing? Oh, what the heck? You know, kids making fun of him. You know, women were probably. <laughs> You know, you're not, you don't be walking around all swole mode 24 <laughs> 7. You know, women are probably making fun of him. You know, people just revile him. And he had to endure all of that the psychological trauma and the physical trauma. All right. Shit gets cold. All right. It gets cold outside. It gets hot outside. But he had to go through all of that just to be an example to the nation. All right. And here soon, that that's not going to continue. The Heavenly Father. Uh, because it tells you, I'm, I'm going to keep reading, uh, it tells you in verse 3, so it will be a sign and a wonder. Alright, so I'm going to go on verse 4. So shall the king of Assyria, Assyria lead away the Egyptians prisoners and the Ethiopians captives, young and old, <coughs> naked and barefoot, even uh, with their buttocks uncovered to the shame of Egypt. Alright, because... Uh, at this time, you know, you had many of our people that were, these are in the same several chapters, you know, uh, our people that were trusting in the chariot of Egypt and whatnot. All right, our people would were disobeying the Heavenly Father when he was telling them that, you know, Nebuchadnezzar was going to come and put us in captivity and things like that. So the Heavenly Father was telling them all those nations that you're running to for refuge, you and them are going to get put down and get drugged into slavery any daggone way. All right, and that's the situation that we have here because our people wanted to be hard-headed and didn't listen. Isaiah had to literally be a living sacrifice, all right, for three fucking years, man. Shit, it's cold right now. I'm out here doing this video. I'm, I got uh, a thermal on my uh, 
hoodie on and my work uniform on. It's fuck. It's still cold, man. Can you imagine walking around for three years? All right. So now let me get uh. Let me get this. Let me get this. I'm gonna get a couple examples and a couple scriptures. All right, because here soon the heavenly Father is just gonna pour out his wrath and his indignation straight on the two thirds. All right. He's not going to keep on uh, being nice to niggas, man. Being nice to Jake. I believe this is... Psh, another one. Dang. Ezekiel, man. Ezekiel chapter 4. I'm going to start at... Uh... Let me see. Okay, Khan, I'll start. This is Ezekiel 4. And once again, this was a similitude uh, that the Heavenly Father was using via his prophet to show how our people were going to suffer for their wickedness. All right, Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 12. And thou shalt eat it as barley cakes, and thou shalt bake it with dung that cometh out of man in their sight. So the Heavenly Father was telling uh, Ezekiel, he just have to go basically get you know, mill, all right, bake uh, barley cakes and mix it with uh, human dung. It says, and which is shit, which is shameful, all right? Verse 13, not only shameful, shit tastes bad, shit, probably. Shit, I, I never consume shit, but from the smell, I'm pretty sure it doesn't taste any better. <laughs> all right, verse 13, and Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai said, even thus shall the children of Israel eat their defiled bread among the Gentiles with their uh, I will drive them. And this was ultimately a punishment that came upon us. That's why now we don't even know where our foods come from. Our, everything we eat uh, is defiled. But this was being set up uh, to be an example. All right? That since we didn't want to listen, the Heavenly Father was using this similitude to show that how eventually all of us were going to be eating our bread defiled. All right, verse 14. And this was Ezekiel. Shit, he, he, <laughs> he protested. All right? He cried out. All right? Uh, verse 14, then said, I, our Lord, uh, most high power, behold, my soul hath not been polluted, for from my youth up even till now have I not eaten of that which dieth of itself or is torn in pieces, neither came there abominable flesh into my mouth. So Ezekiel was giving his plea. He was like, look, Lord, it, it will, I've, I've eaten clean my whole life. I haven't even so much as touched or put anything abominable to my lips. You know, I haven't even eaten of an animal that died of itself, which is, you know, he was quoting the law. Uh, so verse 13, 15, then he said unto me, Lo, I have given thee cows, cows dung for man's dung, and thou shalt prepare thy bread therewith. So the Heavenly Father showed him, you know, a little bit of mercy. He allowed him to, instead of using man's dung, use cow's dung, which is still, you know, horrible. All right, and this ain't the only thing that... Uh, Ezekiel had to uh, endure, all right, to be an example to the nation of Israel. All right, this is something that, you know, whenever I see it, you know, in the heaven, this is the Heavenly Father's picture. He does that and what he wills. And when I see this one, what, what happened to Ezekiel, this shit pisses me off, you know, because the prophets, or the prophets had to stay catching hell or had to stay, uh, you know, being, uh, as Jake likes to say, being out there, you know, someone whose life is continually uh, in danger, all right, just to be examples to the wicked of our people, all right, hey, hey, here, hey, look, here soon, look, hey, Yahushua went up on the cross, all right, that's, that, that was it, we not, we're not going to keep doing this, Lord, we'll not be one of the prophets, we're not going to keep doing this forever, all right. You niggas is finna get your fucking wake up call the two thirds, and I'm not, you know, for those that are watching the Akim Walk Watham, you know, you know how we speak generally. I'm speaking towards the wicked. All right, they're gonna get their damn wake up call. All right, the righteous aren't gonna keep suffering for the bad apples in the class. The two good children in the classroom are gonna keep suffering for the twenty other retarded ass students that want to shoot spitballs and fucking put gum under the desk. All right. So, uh, Ezekiel 24, I'm going to start at 16. It says, Son of man, behold, I take away from thee the desire of thine eyes with the stroke, 
yet neither shall thou mourn nor weep, neither shall thy tears run down. So the Heavenly Father was telling Ezekiel, I'm about to take <laughs> uh, your desire from you. All right, and what's a man's desire? What's a man's glory? 17, forbear to cry. And he was telling them also, don't even cry, don't even shed a tear. It says, forbear to cry, make no mourning for the dead, bind the tire of thine head upon thee, and put on thy shoes upon thy feet, and cover not thy lips, and eat not the bread of men. So he's basically telling them, take it like a man. All right, get girded up, don't shed a tear. All right, verse 18. So I spake unto the people in the morning. So he prophesied unto the people, and at even my wife died. And I did in the morning as I was commanded. So his wife had to die just to be an example uh, to the rockhead nation of Israel. All right, once again, and you know, there's, there's many more... Uh, you know, these are just some of the prominent ones that, you know, are well known. But there's, you know, you go through uh, Samuels and Kings, you'll see stuff uh, that happened. You know, they, the prophets stay uh, <laughs> catching hell because of a regular Jake. All right, the scriptures tell you that uh, that they were sent rising early betimes. All right, we we don't even get no sleep. Because we got to get up and do this work. Or right, do this work. Not even the occupant of the All be of those holy chosen men. Our entire life isn't like you regular 230ths. Our entire life is dedicated to doing the will of Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai. All right, the other night I had woke up at 2 in the morning. And the Lord basically let this airplane pass. Basically has shot a, uh, shot a video idea in my head. All right. And I marked it in my phone, and when I got back up, as soon as I woke up that morning, I got straight to it. All right, we don't even, our whole duty is set up to prophesy, all right? And what do you niggas do? You niggas just think you're so special, you 2 30 all right? Y'all niggas are Israelites too. It's time for y'all to do what you're fucking supposed to, all right? And if you don't want to, the Heavenly Father's going to break you into it. All right, so let me finish this. Ezekiel 25 and 19. And the people said unto me, Wilt thou not tell us what these things are to us that thou doest? So they was like, Oh, what the hell are you doing? You know, the people. Then I answered them, The word of the Lord, uh, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Speak unto the house of Israel, thus saith the Lord Power, Behold, I will profane my sanctuary, the excellency of your strength, the desire of your eyes, and that which your soul pitieth, and your sons and your daughters, whom ye have left, shall fall by the sword. So, Ezekiel had to lose his wife, so it would be an example to the wicked of our people that the same way that he lost his de his desire, they were going to lose their desire, uh, desires, Salakia. All right, the temple, their fucking idols, their women, their children, their goals and aspirations and their wealth that they uh, had. All right, and that's the time that we're, that's the time that we are uh, similar to Salaki, I'm just typing this word in, alright, and we're, we're, okay, Salaki, okay, alright, so we're basically, we're about to enter the time of, instead of us, the prophets, uh, eating shit on, the, uh, uh, eating it on the cheap, you know, uh, taking one for the team, all the rest of y'all are about to. Kind of, all right, and I got this, and I'll close it. Goddamn co-worker starting to move around. All right, Ezekiel 18 and 19. It says, Yet ye say, Why doth not the Son bear the iniquity of the Father? When the Son hath done that which is lawful and right, and hath kept all my statutes, and hath done them, he shall surely live. So when you read up, you know, this is letting you know, you know, how punishment is dished out. But right here in, in this verse is telling you, you know, hey, as we come to understand, you know, we bear the the sins of our forefathers. Hey, but now you're you're going to be judged for the things that you did. All right. And here in verse 19 it was letting you know if if you if it's if the son does what's right, then he'll be judged right. All right. Verse 20. The soul that sinneth it shall die. All right. So you niggas going to die. All right. You niggas going to eat shit and and watch everything you care about get destroyed in front of you. And not receive salvation and die the second fucking death. Alright? The prophets are going to get delivered out of it this time. Alright? Uh, it says, 
the son shall not bear the iniquity of the father, neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon him, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon him. Con, all right. So, hey, y'all niggas gonna have to deal with uh, your bullshit. All right. The prophets ain't finna keep eating shit for you. All right. And another thing, I'm gonna put these pictures up. That's why you had Jeremiah. He was known as the weeping prophet. All right, because he was he had to keep. He didn't even get to live his childhood. He immediately went straight prophet mode. The heavenly father immediately called him to prophecy. And he was known as the weeping prophet because he was always lamenting the condition of Israel. But even he got to a certain point to where he was like, man, fuck Jake. All right, so I'm, I'm going to put a couple pictures up uh, concerning it. All right, one off of Google that I found. This, you know, this says some shit about Kohen. You know, that's some BS. That's an extra made-up tribe that Amalek came up with. Don't mind that. But, hey, you know, hey, the wicked of our people, they're going to eat their own shit. The prophets aren't going to eat it for them anymore. Alright, so with that, I'm going to give all praises to you. Hawa Bashim, Yahushai Bashim. Rechachorash, Devonish to the apostles and elders, great millstone. Peace, blessings, and salutations to all that is Akim. Wa'akwatim, learning and teaching in truth and in sincerity. With that, I'm going to say Shalom.